a series, a ground ball series for the outfield. We'll go ahead and do all ground balls that she's going to receive and all types of fly balls. You can do this ground ball series with a fungo hitter or a coach or player tossing the ball, whichever is most convenient for you in your team setting. She's going to be working the set of routine ground balls. Then we'll move her a little bit more laterally to work her backhand. You'll notice how she does a good job of rounding the ball and making it a forehand ground ball. So this is to her backhand side, but watch her round it and get body, ball, and target lined up. This would be an imaginary throw home where she gets behind the ball each time. Now we'll go ahead and we'll go to her forehand side. She works on rounding it and lining up her throw. Once the outfielder has fielded the ball that she charges, the ball that she moves laterally on her forehand and her backhand side, we then go ahead and work on the fly balls, both right when they're underneath it, laterally to their left and to their right, and then we finish up with the, the uh, fly ball over their shoulder. Let's go ahead and take a look right now as Monique's going to move left and right and get right underneath the fly ball. We'll now go through and hit the fly ball laterally, both to her forehand and then her backhand side. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at Monique fielding on her backhand side, see if she gets around the ball, lining up body, ball, and target. The last drill is the over-the-shoulder drill. You'll notice that when Monique is on the run, she will break away that bare hand to give herself more extension on her glove side. The key here is to make sure that you catch the ball. Anytime you're right under a ball or right behind a ball, you can use both hands, but when you have to extend, you have to free up that bare hand. Let's go ahead and take a look at her forehand side. You can see the key for her is to keep her body on one side 
of the line of the ball. The ball comes up and it comes down, it draws an imaginary line, and she's trying to stay on one line of the ball. The last ball that involves the ground ball series for the outfielder is a do or die, where the outfielder has to do a good job of keeping her glove and her head on the ball, whether she turns it into a shoestring catch or a short hop ball that she's got to feel cleanly to give her an opportunity to throw the base runner out. Many times the problems with the outfielders is they approach that ball, they see they're not going to catch it, and you'll see where they pull their head up and their glove and the ball will get beneath them. Right now, watch how Monique does a good job of attacking that fly ball. If she doesn't catch it, she keeps her head down and her glove down as she runs through. It's a do or die situation and catches the ball. Let's take a look right now. Notice how Mo does a good job of realizing that the ball doesn't bounce that high once it hits the grass. She keeps her glove down and receives the ball. Right now we're going to take a look at dropping back on a ball. What we're going to do in this drill for the, out, the outfield is she's going to go ahead and work on dropping back her left shoulder, a series of balls, then her right shoulder. The last portion of that drill She's going to go ahead and simulate dropping her left shoulder, but needing to drop her right. So she'll go ahead and she'll drop with one shoulder, realize she's turned the wrong way, and go blind to keep her momentum in this direction and come back and catch. Sometimes we don't always drop the correct shoulder, so we'll go ahead and work on dropping left, then dropping right, and then dropping the incorrect shoulder and spinning back and catching. The key so this situation is that the outfielder can't panic if they make a poor choice in their first step. Let's take a look at that series of dropping back for the outfield. The next set of drills for the outfield is working the sun ball. So what we try to do is we try to line up the fly ball in line with the sun. It gives the outfielders an opportunity not to panic when they know that the ball goes into the sun. An easy thing to remember is the ball goes into the sun, it'll always come out. You just have to be very aware when you block the sun, it enables your vision to stay clear. If your vision follows that ball into the sun, that's when you get those little black spots and you get blinded by the sun ball. So the key to catching the sun ball is following the ball up as it gets into the sun area, block the sun out, be patient because as the sun is here the ball will come up into the sun. Yes, you do lose it for a split second but don't panic. It will come right back down with gravity. Have confidence that you have enough time to react when the ball is on its downward flight. Let's take a look right now at a series of fly balls in the sun. One of the qualities of being a good outfielder is being able to catch the ball on the run. We're going to go ahead and work a series of line drives at the outfielder. This can be accomplished through fungo line drive or the coach just throwing line shots as the outfielder moves laterally to catch the ball on the run. We emphasize at UCLA, anytime you can catch a ball in the infield or the outfield within this area, it's always two hands. If you go outside those four corners, that four corner area, you got to sometimes release that bare hand so you have more extension. And what I mean by that is if I have, I'm a left-handed person. If I have my glove on here and I go outside my four corners, it's nice to be able to go two hands right here. But as I continue to try to extend 
You'll notice I can only go this far. I'm fully extended with two hands. But once the ball goes outside of this area, I've got to free up the bare hand in order to catch this ball. Watch how much more extension I get when I free up this bare hand. Keep an eye right here. This is my glove hand. I'm left-handed. This is my glove hand, two hands. Of course, we always want to catch it with two hands. But what about when we can't? Watch how much more range I get when I release the bare hand. So you're going to see our fielders work now on fully extending their bodies and able to catch the line drive. Let's take a look right now as the outfielders work on line drives laterally left and laterally right. The next outfield drill is a zigzag drill. What it does is it puts together three catches in one drill. They work on dropping left, then dropping right, and then dropping left. You can incorporate stamina in this drill by adding more zigs and more zags. Right now she's going to zig left, zig right, zig left. But you can go ahead and add as many as you want to build up stamina. The key is for them to work on running light on their feet, making sure that when they're cutting back they've got a smooth, quiet head when they drop back for that ball. If they have a bouncing head, the ball will have a tendency to bounce in the air. Let's take a look right now as Monique is going to go ahead and work on the zigzag drill in the outfield. Right now we're going to look at fly balls on the fence for the outfielders to work on. Once again, it's key that they get to the fence and then vertically jump in order to catch that ball. A quick note for coaches, many times the outfielders slow down too soon. They think the fence is closer than it really is. So go ahead and work drills so they understand how much time and how much space they have when they get ready to catch balls on the fence. Notice how Monique uses her bare hand as an antenna when she starts to feel like she's getting close to the fence. <laughs> Let's take a look at the outfielders working on running through the ball. And what I mean by that is a routine fly ball, many of our outfielders do a bad job of running through it. So when you know you're going to catch a ball, you don't just sit right underneath that fly ball. You time it so you go back slightly and time it so your momentum has you running in when you get ready to catch that ball. So let's look right now as the outfielder works on run-throughs on the fly ball. That concludes the videotape for defensive drills for every position. Remember coaches and players, you have a drill progression to go through. You have ball handling drills and throwing drills that you have to do, whether you do it before or after practice. At UCLA we call them pre-practice fundamentals, PPFs. From there you progress to ground ball series. Getting the ball on the left, getting the ball on the right, charging the ball and getting the ball on the air, in the air over your shoulder. Then you progress to position play, drills that evolve around your position, making sure you feel comfortable with all the responsibilities at that position. Once you put those all together, you master your position. Remember, defense is the foundation and the fundamental key in winning ball games. Good luck in defensive drills at every position.